Let's set the record straight. Violent crime has been on a decline in the United States since the early 1990s. Don't believe me? Here's a chart. This covers a smorgasbord of party affiliations, presidents, local and world events, and more, interwoven into a reductionist stream. Some dots and lines on a graph. From the data that informs this graph, though, you will get articles fighting over which party positions, policies, and enforcement is at fault for the crime that does take place. If I were a Republican, I might tell you that 27 of the top 30 cities for crime rates are Democrat-ran. So, boo Democrats, they're at fault. And if I were a typical Democrat, I'd refute that by telling you, well, those cities are largely controlled by their state laws, and the top states for murder are Republican states. Boo, Republicans. They're at fault. Neither of these articles really dug in like I wanted. They certainly showcased a lot of data, but I wanted to know if our elected officials really do in some way showcase our strictness of laws created, our sentiment towards those laws, and how we enforce it, in the end resulting in some kind of which party turns out better or worse for crime. To be fair, I don't think this is a good thing to do with the crime data as it's far more complicated problem than either side is seemingly willing to admit. But if I want to give weight to that argument like those articles do and some people definitely do, then what would it look like if we tried to include both viewpoints? The quick overview of how I handled the data was, for lots of reasons, I ended up using Congress members. House to represent that more granular view that Republicans want, and Senate for that higher level state overview that Democrats seem to side with. I added in governors for a kind of idea on guidance for enforcement, and then divided crime up by party affiliations in each state accordingly. And then I weighted appropriately so that the party with more representation out of those groups wasn't dinged for simply representing more areas which was good for Republicans, actually, since they were surprisingly the more popular party amongst all of these positions. I used 2022 data for a slew of reasons, but mostly because it was the most comprehensive and the latest midterm election to get the best view of the voting landscape. For more information on what I didn't use and why, check the description. For all of this data, though, should Republicans and Democrats elected officials be just as bad for crime rates as each other, you'd expect to see in the charts them both at 100%, and results over 100 means they had more representation than we'd expect for that crime, which is bad news for them, and if they were under 100%, then good news. So let's dig in. When looking at homicide, Republicans actually end up being overrepresented by 5.6%. This means they are running worse with regards to homicide than you'd expect if all things were otherwise equal. Democrats, on the other hand, are at 5.9% less than expected. This is only one data point, sure, but that's a first win for Democrats right out the gate, so long as you value not getting murdered. Purely evil crime is rape, and something that affects women and children far more than men, making this one not just about which officials are better at crime prevention, but also potentially incorporating how the culture of those various places stand out as less safe for women. Here, Republican-ran states also ran overrepresented, meaning worse again, by 9.4% than expected. And Democrats are under by 11.2%. This was a surprisingly startling divide, and one to keep in mind how policies may play a role in why this might break down this way. When I was looking at the numbers for robbery, I have to admit my mind was actually kind of blown. The, the variation in robbery between Democrats and Republicans is pretty startling. Republicans in this case are actually underrepresented, meaning good, by a whopping 16.5%. And Democrats are over by 21.7%. This paints a picture that at least when conservative media is talking about robbery and businesses leaving areas, they may not be overreacting. Just keep in mind that harping on this being their only statistic to look at in terms of safety, as we've seen, is kind of cherry-picked for a reason. But still, this is pretty astonishing and is the largest divide we'll actually see in any of the violent crimes. The last category that the FBI tracks as part of the Violent Crimes Database is aggravated assault. 
And here you'll see that Republican leaders again overrepresent, meaning worse again for safety by 5.6%, and Democrats underrepresent by 5.9%, meaning better for safety from aggravated assault. So overall, in three of the four categories that fall under violent crimes, states with more Republican representation end up being overall worse for our safety than Democrat representation. Be careful, this is by no means definitive proof of representation equaling more or less violent crime. It just can't be concluded that how punishing you make your policies against criminals necessarily equates to more or less crime either. And it also showcases we need better tools. The FBI crime database is a volunteer system where not all precincts volunteer their information each year. It's self-reported and it's not consistent. If we truly want to answer what helps make people safe, we really need to create and enforce tracking first and foremost, find which areas do it the best, and then see how they do it, not rely on some top 10 lists. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.